Salamu Dunia. My name is Kevin Percelli. I am the executive for Miami YPN, and thank you for watching our podcast, Help Me YPN. Before we get started, let's give it up for our amazing sponsors out here today and with us for this episode, Balancing Family Life with Business, we have Brian Acosta. Brian, tell us all the things that Revival Capital does for our members. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, we're a mortgage brokerage company that services all of Florida, and, um, and our dedication is just to our clients and our partners, and we just have a strong focus on being an extension of the experience that our agents bring and just passing that on to our clients and making them feel cared about and making them feel taken care of and delivering on our promises. So that's what we do. Delivering promises is massive. And uh, we've all probably made some promises to our family. And that's what this podcast is all about is make sure you deliver on those promises as well, because you do have to balance family life with work life. So um, we'll start with you, Brian. Um, how do you manage your business and family time? Oh man, <laughs> it's been a it's been a learning process uh, for sure. Um, I'm thankful for my wife. Uh, she's kind of been that uh, that guiding <laughs> that guiding light to reel me in when I'm you know trying to grind for our family. You know she celebrates me and says, "Hey, I'm thankful for you know everything you're doing for the work you're putting in and and trying to grow for our family." But um, remember how important you are, you know, being here in the house, and so and so I need that, and it's it's helped me tremendously. And so we just have good communication. And so sometimes when I have a week where it's like nonstop and I have to stay late on certain days, I have meetings, I have events like here tonight, um, you know, uh, we, have a, we have a talk about it and we're able to do that. But um, I think the key is just to be intentional, you know, with your family and separating time for them and, and being there when they need you. And so, and so that for me is, has just been the key, um, you know, doing that. Yeah, shout out to all the wives, for sure. It is 9.35 right now, and we're all in the podcast studio together. Hey, I've got a fiancé, okay? <laughs> okay. Hey, 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 Carlos, okay. we love you too, bro. We love all you right. too. <laughs> all right. But a shout out to the wives, for sure. No, I'm playing. Um, so uh, what else has everybody got? How do you balance your time? So for me, it's it's all juggling act. Um, I multitask, and I have a lot of support. If it wasn't for my foundation of my mother, who is Nana, who is my son's best friend, and my papa, her husband, and my fiance, like I could not do what I do, you know? Because mm -hmm. I am allowed to go to these events, um, show up, travel, work my ass off, work while I'm even on vacation. It's almost to the point where they know, like it's just like, they're with me on vacation and I'm on that phone and they're just like, okay, you know, I'm going to walk away for a second because I know. Because in the beginning it was challenging, right? Because they're like, you know, where are you? What are you doing? We're here. We're having a good time. But at the end of the day, they know that I hustle and they support me. And if they didn't, how could I be where I'm at? Yeah. yeah so. That's all right. That's all right. Oh, uh, me is kind of uncomfortable. Unconventional? Yeah. Unconventional. So I kind of just said, screw it. I just do everything with a baby. Like, I, <laughs> I'll i be on a Zoom call with a baby in my hand, and, like, like Lori will tell you. She'll be like, oh, cute baby. You know, like, um, I'm, like, I just, because my dad died when I was seven, so I never had those experiences of, like, fatherhood, and no one else that I was friends with had a dad. So I've never seen a dad. So every single experience I could give, like, my kids, I'm like, let's do it. Come on, you're coming with me. Like, I've never seen it, so I don't know that you shouldn't do it, so no one's going to tell me, you know? So, and also, it's like, I'm the broker, so who's going to tell me, like, hey, you're fired, you know? So I just, I'm bringing a baby. I'm bringing a baby with me. Um, uh, unless it's, like, a, like a showing where, like, you know, sometimes you have a moldy property or something you can't, you know, it's a little hazardous, I'll leave her. But for the most part, she's by my side. Listen, I carried my baby with me until he was two years old, yeah. and I carried him in that walker up those stairs, and I opened lock boxes holding him when he was four months old. They're like, you need help? I'm like, no, I'm good. Yeah, yeah you, right? I figure it out. I figure it out. I figure it out. No, it's definitely, you know, a, a challenge, um, I would say, because, you know, us as real estate professionals, I think we embody a lot of our clients, you know, problems even outside of the scope of a real estate transaction. Sometimes they just want you to listen to them. And sometimes that takes away from, you know, spending time with your family because you're tending to, you know, their emotions at times. 
But, you know, I think my biggest thing has been as I've grown is, you know, I've time blocked for everything else. So now I time block for family. So, you know, being that, you know, I want to spend time with my son, I'll put it on my schedule. I know it may sound crazy, but I put it on my schedule so no one else can book that time. Yeah, like you, you're you know, closed. Like block, you're yeah, done. Yeah, you're I'm off the shop, clock. Shop's closed. So yeah. um, I think that's been my biggest, you know, you know, improvement with, you know, spending time with family is incorporating in my actual schedule. That's good. Yeah. I, I would also add setting expectations with our clients. Mm. And if someone doesn't have understanding <laughs> that it's time for my boy, we're not a good fit. That's like non negotiable. Like, yeah. Y- y- you know, y- if it's my weekend and I have a shared custody, if it's my weekend and I want to take him to Orlando and the bar is in town and they don't have, you know, respect for that. Mm-hmm. I'll figure out. It's not gonna be me it's showing. Not worth it. It's not gonna be me showing you properties. It's gonna be someone else, and if I'll make it happen. But I'm not gonna be present. I'm I'm there for my boy. So I would say setting expectations from the beginning. Yeah. So there's no like, oh, Mate, but we were expecting to see you. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I prepare you for this. Yeah, I heavily rely on my team for that. Just so like I can like obviously there's certain things I cannot physically cannot yeah. do. So I'll heavily rely on. I need you to show this or do that. So that's a good point. I guess we got everybody. Cool. Um, <laughs> sorry, I was waiting for another answer. Um, but uh, hey, so I guess does does family life ever make you feel like you work too much? And if that does give the impression, how do you how do you work around that? How do you explain that? So I have moments where I'll constantly have like an anxiety attack, feeling like I'm like not doing enough. So it's very hard to feel like you're excelling in all fields of your life, whether it be the business field or the family field. So it's like, if I'm doing great, like I'm spending a bunch of time with my daughter, I'm reading with her, I'm showing her, I'm teaching her how to walk. I'll just feel like, damn, I've been doing a lot of this, but what about my clients? What about this? What about that? What about my agents? You know, so it's, it just stresses me out. So then I'm like, all right, let me focus on my agents. And I'm just going really into whatever my agents need for this week. Then I'm like, oh man, what about my daughter? She needs me. She hasn't, I haven't really played with her as much. You know, so it's very, it's like a, you're never right. You're never going to do enough, and it's always going to be an anxiety attack, and you're always going to feel like you're doing a bad job, but you just have to kind of trust yourself, I feel. That's what I'm, that's what I'm teaching myself, at, at least. I'm telling myself that. Yeah. I, I definitely feel like, you know, um, at times you feel like you may work too hard, and like you said, like you may be overcompensating when it comes to working as opposed to spending time with your family. It, it's definitely a battle, um, to be honest with you. Um, when you you know, when I think about it, you know, sometimes it's like, you know what, it's time to just shut it down. Um, so there are times where I feel like I do work too much. And then also you have to start understanding your spouse as well. Like, yeah. and sometimes they don't even have to vocalize it. But, um, you know, you sometimes you can feel like, you know, they're, they're overwhelmed with just taking care of the baby by themselves for the majority of the time. So it's time for you to put in that, that time as well. So, um, yeah, I feel like I work too much at times. But, you know, I'm trying to work on balancing that out a little bit better. It's like we're in a business, though, where it's like you don't really control that. You know, like I remember being in AutoZone, getting a battery and then getting on a 20 minute debate <laughs> with somebody like you. There's no reason to spend 20 minutes in AutoZone, you know. So <laughs> I'm literally like I walked away from the counter and just pacing down the aisles having this conversation because I can't leave until it's handled. Yeah. So it sometimes it will consume you. It'll mm-hmm. take your day if you let it. But there's those times where you just can't avoid it. You're like, I'm sorry, I cannot give you any of me right now. I like this needs a bunch of my attention. Correct. So that's that's another struggle in itself. Mm-hmm. 100%. Do I work too much? Yes. Yeah, you have to though. <laughs> All the time, in the Bahamas, in the water, yes. in the vacation, yes. in the pool, yes. everywhere. Yes. But I also take the time to remember that my son is everything. Mm-hmm. So every single night we read books. And just recently, he's six years old. He finished the cat in the hat. Not the cat in the hat. Okay. The cat in the hat. The cat in the hat. And and he read it all by himself. That's so cool. And he was frustrated. Let me tell you. Oh wow! Mm. I can't wait on those. But every single night, you know how good I felt because I would get calls. You know, between eight and nine. Yeah. Still get calls. Yeah. And typically, if you're awake and you see a call, you take it. I don't care. I'm not one of those agents that's like, oh no, you know, five o'clock, I cut off. No, mm-hmm. no. Uh. Uh-uh. You can call me at twelve, and if I'm open and I see that phone call, I'll just text you back. It's just a text, right? If I yeah. can, I can't. But when the cat in the hat hour comes on, yeah. Let me tell you, I sit down and I and I and I relish that time. Yeah. You know, because I do feel guilty. You know, I, mean, I, I do. do. Like, for yeah. example, like I'm super busy. I'm always out. I'm always going. 
but my son knows. He's like, my son, my mom is, my mom is a boss, and my yeah. mom's a real estate agent. Yeah. And I tell him like, hey, listen, if I'm on the phone, and he'll be like, but mom, put the phone down. I'm like, but wait, 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 wait. Mom has to send this text because I'm selling a $2 million house right now. Just relax. It's okay. And he's like, okay, mom, but I want to go to Disney. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me, like, the other day, my God, I was walking my dogs with my goddaughter, and she said, Khalid, are you a boss? <laughs> I was like, yeah. My son called me a yes, boss. My mom, my mom is the boss. I mean, my, yeah. my son, I mean, I don't like to say this out loud. I tell him not to say it, but you know yeah. what? He can say it. You know what? Yeah, like, he should say it. He's like, my mom's a millionaire. Yeah. Yeah. All and I'm that. like, what? I'm that's like, no, right. no, no. Yeah. Relax, kid. Yeah, but no, chill. but you're right. But you're right. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good, though. It's good that because you want your child to have that confidence and that level of, like, I belong in these places. You I know, want him to manifest greatness, and I want him to see it in me so that he can aspire to be greater yeah because like i personally had to learn like you deserve nice things you know so i'm sure a lot of people and kids deal with that so i feel like it's great that we're all kind of like showing our kids that like you know that nicer side of life like hey you can do good and it's okay let me tell you i didn't have hardly anything growing up but yeah. i had but i did have family and my mom was a single mom a nurse mm -hmm. and she refused to live in a bad neighborhood she refused to put us in the same bedroom yeah she refused to do anything for herself she yeah. just lived for her kids she had a decent salary we lived in a nice neighborhood but i didn't have anything yeah i had 200 bucks a year to go buy school supplies yeah so my son has no idea what it's like to live that life yeah. and i hope that i can continue to provide that for him and that's the reason why I do what I do. You want them to kind of have a head start. Yeah. Well, we all join this industry. Either we want more money or we want more time. And that's going to change. Like yeah. the first three years, I was carrying my boy to showings, you name it, everywhere. Yeah. I, I had to. I didn't have, I, I'm here by myself in this country. There was no other choice. And daddy had to work weekends even when I have you. Mm -hmm. But now, no. I Honestly, I work less last three years than I did the first three years. Yeah, and I'm more profitable. I have more free time, all because you are you get better. Our skills improve. We help more families, so we have forever clients now. S we get better, and now I choose to have more time with him. Yeah, and then we make some smarter investments, so we have money working for us. So we don't have to. Y you guys know what? Yeah, about no, so I get it. I so definitely so get so it. So it's really that, and it's honestly, I don't, I don't answer phone calls if I know there is a there is a client that is going to drain my energy at the moment and I'm with my boy, I choose I not that, to yeah. pick up that phone. That's I true. don't care because I don't want my energy to go down because of the client that simply, they, they feel like talking about something mm -hmm. that it cannot be fixed. It's Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, I, nothing I can do today. Yeah, and I didn't and understand also, that. And also when I go to any trips mm -hmm. and I go, I go outside the country often, I call all my people and I let them know, hey, I'm not going to be in the country, but this is the person who's going to be taken care of if we are under contract. This is the transaction coordinator. These are the next steps. I am going to be available, but it's six hour difference. So if I don't answer to you same day, just understand that, you know, we're six time zones apart and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. So ba going back to setting those expectations. Mm -hmm. So if I'm traveling, you know what? I don't want to be checking my phone all the time. I don't want to look at my Gmail to see if the offer was accepted. Or I'm going to set expectations and I'm going to ask people to help me out. Of course, I'm going to com compensate them ahead of time and tell them like, hey, you help me with this. This is what I'm going to do for you. Mm -hmm. Because I'd rather make less money on that uh, transaction and helping that family, but have 100% of my time dedicated to my son or my family that I'm going to see in Serbia. Uh, so I set those expectations before I, I ever leave the country. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, but that's good that you said that about investing those three years because you had that season of sacrifice so that now you could buy back your time and you're able to do the things that you want. And I always wrestle with this idea that in this time that we're trying to build for our families is the time they need us most. And it's so challenging because you're like, man, I want to build for them. Like you were sharing, just being able to give them the life that you want to give them and, and share that time. But then at the same time, it's like, that's the time that you have a limited amount of time, right? Like when they get to your teenage years, like us, we went out on our own, yeah. you want to go out, do your own thing. So it's like there's this window there. And so it's so key to, to treasure that and to mm -hmm. find a way to say, man, I need to intertwine this somehow and make it work because it's, 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 so, it's so valuable. But 
that's that's powerful about there being having to still be a season where you might have to sacrifice, you might have to put in some work to get to that place where you have more freedom. So. Yeah, I feel like the main idea of all of that is for you to really do this successfully, you have to kind of like put some trust in other people. Like you can't. There's no way to do it. Uh, really, Danya, Danya's the. I feel like I would trust Danya with my biggest client too. Like, you're <laughs> I all got right. You, I got you're you. all right. Yeah. <laughs> but like my team and everything, like I couldn't be the parent I am or like I'm trying to be without them being able to trust them with my biggest client. You know. So, yeah. And and also ex- explaining, it's okay to make mistake. Yeah. I mean, who made mistake? No one. Am I the only one who made a mistake, made a mistake in this business? Oh. I, 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 I thought you was going somewhere. I thought you was going somewhere. I was, I was waiting. I was waiting. I was waiting too. You're like, damn, I messed up. Next yeah, like, time, I'm not going to do that. I was like, uh-huh. Yeah. So, and it's okay if you have a team or you have a partner that is helping you with this. You know, don't put a lot of pressure and like, hey, you know, this has to be perfect. This has, like, when, when you talk to people like that, mm-hmm. there is higher probability that they're actually going to drop the ball versus just trusting them and saying, you know what, Dania, you're amazing and I know you're going to do this and you don't have to let me know when it's done because I trust you 100%. And yeah. guess what's going to happen? She's going to kill it. Dania is going to yeah. get it to the finish line. That's good leadership, though. You have to get better at, like, trusting and leading people because some people, like, they want to be helped, so you're helping them get to success. Like We need to empower people. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. what we have to do. Yes. And we also need to be empowered by someone else. I mean, yes. it's... It's really a relationship. Yeah. Just from coming from being there, like having employers and being in like a lower level of every position, it's like you know the managers you like because you feel like they're setting me up for success. They want me to do better. They want to see me where they, you know, so all that goes a long way. 100%. Mm-hmm. Cool. So, uh, guys, thanks for thanks for always making the time for your kids. They're going to appreciate it a lot. And fun fact, um, looking at the history of NARYPN, presidents a lot of them are second generation so i'm no pressure on having your offspring join the uh (laughs) real estate industry but um it definitely puts them at a huge advantage not only for business but for leadership itself and maybe you'll be the prime example for that so just things to keep in mind i I see this a lot on the national level a lot of the people that are actively involved um, in national networks maybe they're actively involved because their parents paved the way for that Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of things that you're doing that you may not know about that could provide for them later on. And obviously putting yourself out there in this industry can be everything. So uh, we've talked a little bit about uh, working too much. So let's talk about when it's time to shut it down. Uh, what warning signs have you seen? What sort of things do you know it's time to be like, hey, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this off for tomorrow. Donnie, I'll go ahead and start. My fiance says, put it down. <laughs> 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 and I say, okay. Yeah. That's, you know what? That's you're, right. you're right. You're right. Because yeah. it's like, what can you solve at eight o'clock at night that you yeah. cannot do tomorrow? It is our time. You're busy. You're you're hustling. You're always out there. Right now, it's us. It's your kid. It's us. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I have the same. So, like, my wife is. And she's like, so they already know what's going on. Yeah. And they know what you need to do. Yeah. So, so what are you doing right now? So that's the biggest thing. Sometimes I'll try to keep drilling the situation, and I won't let it go until it's mm-hmm. solved. And sometimes it's just like, what needs to get disclosed has been disclosed. Just stop, think, figure it out, focus on something else, and get back to it. So, you're right. Yeah. Same here. My wife, you know, she shuts it down. Like, you know, because I'm the type that I always, like I said before, like my mind is always racing. And so I always feel like there's something else I could be doing to refine my business. So I'm firing myself up one, two in the morning, and yeah. she comes in the kitchen. She's like, "Put it up." Yeah, <laughs> and it's like no argument at that point, um, you know, because she knows there's nothing more you can give. Like yeah. you're running on E at this point, and you know she always says, you know, what time does you know business start? Like 9 a.m. Yeah. What can you do at two in the morning? Like right. they're not gonna get an email at 9 a.m. when you wake up and and, and send it off then. So, you know. It, it's tough, you know. Um, it's tough to say when is the right time to shut it off because we live in, we work in an industry where, you know, it's so ever moving, right? Yeah, and so yeah. many moving parts in it, and there's always something to be addressed. So it's hard to say when to shut it down, but in my opinion, when it's time to shut it down is when your family's like responding to you, like, hey, it's enough. Yeah, when they notice, yeah. they'll notice the changes in you. Mm-hmm. So that's the biggest thing I peep. But. People need instant gratification nowadays. They yeah. want to know in two seconds. Yeah, I need to, like, which is, is fine. this solved or do we But have you a know what? At the end of the day, mm-hmm. if you're in demand and you are like, 
a really good producer, like you have to understand, like there is an order of operation. There is a yeah. lot of people that need stuff from you. Yeah. I'm more you know? helpful to you than you. It's are like we're gonna that. get to it, but we know that it's not pressing. We know how to balance it. We know that like this person needs it right now, and that person can wait five minutes. Yeah, you know, and and that's, that's the balance because people just want to like click, boom, bing, bum, bum. Yeah. Like yeah. if the Wi-Fi ain't fast enough, we moving on. But yeah, no. I would melt myself down sometimes. Like I would, I would be driving and miss exits. Like I would blank oh, out. Oh my god, I miss time. exits all day, yeah, every like day. Yeah, like it's natural for oh, this. It's so my common. car has so many extra miles on it. It's so actually common no, for it's us. a new car. But yeah, all right now, okay, <laughs> okay, die you, die you, okay. Donya is a new bought, whip, I, and I just bought my new car for the all first right. time. Which I'm proud of. Yeah. It's a Jaguar. I wish I knew what these buttons it's did. Sexy. I would hit a sound effect for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't what, know what, 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 what is the Jaguar? <laughs> right, I'm a gambler. <laughs> <laughs> did it fit? I don't, I don't think don't I hit a button. <laughs> 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 I don't think I hit a button. But that's cool. Brian, how about you, man? Um, what do you do? You ever have to shut it down? Do you? Uh, do you? Do you, Do you get the guilt? Tell, tell us how you deal with all that, man. It's hard, man. When you when you own your business, there's not really hours, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's it, and, and I like uh, what Daniel was saying. It is situational to a certain extent, right? There are some things where sometimes you gotta attend to a si- uh, situation right away, and other things that you know you can wait. I think if you take the time to just send a quick text and say, "Hey, no problem, I'm gonna take care of it." It will help people feel better, and you don't have to say, "I'm gonna do it right now." You can say, "Hey, I'm gonna take care of that for you." And I think just making that little detail makes people feel that you care about that they reached out. And if it's something that you know you have to take care of, you try to do it. And there will be those moments that, um, and I think this is for me personal, you know, when we have uh, dinner, let's say, I'll put my phone and I'll just leave it on, on the countertop and then I'll go to the dinner table and we have dinner as a family. And I just, during that time, I won't answer my phone. If when we finish and, you know, I finish uh, putting the kids to sleep and I'm on my bed and I can respond to a text or whatnot, I'll, I'll do that. Um, but there, there has to be some times where, you know, if your child is doing something important, they're, they're at a show, you know, you're watching them, they want you to see them do something, you want to be present. You don't want to be, you know, on this phone uh, because, you know, they're not going to feel appreciated and, and um, you know, we need to have that focus on them. Mate, your, your situation is a little different. When, when do you know to shut it down? Every day I have my son, it's like non-negotiable. Nothing's more important. And, and, and I, I really... S- I became very good on setting expectations and disconnecting from the phone. Like, I wake up early because my son has a special diet and he's a special need boy. Uh, So I have to do a lot of things before he even wakes up that requires me to go to sleep on time. Like, if I want, I'm waking up at 4. I'm waking up at 4. That means I have to disconnect from the phone by 8.39 so I can fall asleep by 9.30.10. I used to be five and a half, six hour uh, type of guy that slept and I took some uh, masteries with Tony Robbins and they said you really had to do at least six and a half seven if you if you really cut your sleep to like five hours throughout the years you're gonna see some serious consequences so luckily I heard that and I was like oh okay even though you know you you feel like okay this this age and I'm gonna be 39 you know I, I can keep pushing well probably down the road I'm going to be taking some uh, some serious consequences. So I don't answer the phone call. Even if I see the text message, I wait until tomorrow. Going back to setting expectations, I tell all the clients, there's no real estate emergency. And I tell them, this is, these are the things you know I do. This is how my mornings are. This is what I do in the evenings. Every other weekend I have my son. I'm probably not going to be able to help you out, but I'm going to find someone ahead of time. So guess what happened when they asked me? Hey, Mate, I know you're with your son, but whenever you get a chance, can you send me this? Or can you yeah. check this for me? That's so po- See, I'm glad I'm here sitting for this because yeah. I yeah. will almost kill myself over a client's want or need or text. So I will be driving here and I will still be texting you because I'm like, okay, you got $10,000 up. Like, you know, I take it so seriously and it... It'll be the death of me, honestly. So, me I, yeah, I tell myself I need to stop. It can wait. They will be fine if I respond in 30 minutes. Nothing will go wrong, but I'll be in the shower and my phone rings. I'll jump out and I'm like, what happened? You know, just because I'm so used to things going wrong. I'll be in the shower on speaker. Yeah, no, I'll be like, what happened? I've done that too. 
cause, cause I'm the broker, so I got the ages. I never know what's going on, so I'll get surprised with a problem and I'll just freak out, and that alone will stress me out. Yeah. So, so I'm losing hair right now, bro. You know, so, so I need. Yeah. So sorry to jump in. Yeah. That's so powerful what you just said and you, mm-hmm. because the real happiness comes when we learn how to be proactive versus reactive. Yeah. So if I'm going to react to every single thing that happened in my life. Am I controlling my life or someone else? Yeah. You're right. I react to everything. No, I feel proactive in that shower. <laughs> yeah, no. I will, <laughs> I will, I will, find, I'm I will I feel reactive. proactive. I feel like I'm using the best use of my time right now. Yeah. I'm double tasking. <laughs> this, I'm driving. It's like, the best use of my yeah, time to be no, calling you, texting you, you back. No. Maybe, maybe not te- talk to text, you know? like. Yeah, talk to text. <laughs> talk to, use a, use a, the, the smart drive features, whatever you call it. In no, no, no. Vehicle. I talk, like I literally send yeah. voice memos. Yeah. I don't text. I'd be like, bum bum bum. I don't like those. I, you I know can't what? I didn't like them, but the last year, man, they're magical. Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. You know why? Because you can just say whatever you got to say. Yeah. And while you're driving, you'd be like, I need you to send this form right now. I need you to scratch this I out. It. I need you to do it no, like no, that. Let me tell you why it'll work. I know it don't work, but I'm let me tell, tell you, you it's working. Okay, let me <laughs> tell me. you why. So for me, if you send me that, I'm going to start playing like, oh, he's loud. Let me stop it. And then, like, okay, the baby's going to sleep. She's asleep. Now let me play it, but it's gone. You can play it on your ear. No, what are you talking gone. about? It it's, on a, it's on an two iPhone. Minutes. It goes away in two minutes. Two it's minutes. Gone. I, d- on I, never, the iPhone? I don't even know what you said. My voice memo? Gone. Really? Yeah, yeah. Do, do voice to text. If, voice to text. No. If you send me a voice to text, I send I'm it to my team all day, to Your my team, assistant. They respect you. Oh, let me tell and you, they, they listen, listen to, you to me. Very well. <laughs> they I listen heard a guy to me. Say they that. listen to you very well. He says uh, that voice voice memos are convenient for you, but to no one else. Because I can't. Yo, let me tell you. I gotta wait. It's working, okay? Because they be listening and doing what I. I they have to. They don't have a choice. They have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm they have a choice, and their choice is to listen. <laughs> so yeah. let me, can I ask a question? No, yeah. Yeah. I have all my real estate people okay. here. Yeah. So when I meet with a lot of agents, I'll ask them, like, so what do you love, you know, about your lender? And something that I've heard many, many times is they say, you know, oh, my lender will answer my phone Sunday at, at 10 o'clock at night. And yes. they'll say something along those lines. So yes. hearing so many uh, you guys, um, you know, successful people saying, Hey, look, you know, I have my times and I have my set apart. Why do you think it is that you hear that so often from agents that I know that do well also that that's something that they excited about, you know? Because it's communication. It's key, right? So, like, if you will respond to me at, like, 12 o'clock at night or if I will text you and you will give me a text back, I feel like that's paramount. Like you said earlier, it doesn't matter. I will still text people to give them follow up, like, or I would just communicate. Because a lot of times there's nothing to say, right? Mm-hmm. The transaction's processing. But if you text that person and say, hey, by the way, transaction's processing, we're just waiting, they feel so good about that. Yeah. That's no, the key. You, you see, Between I, a lender, I, I, an agent, whoever. I agree with Brian. Whoever tells me that, hey, this is my family time, I don't work on Sundays. I respect that and I said, you know what? I love that about you and you keep doing that. You know why? Because if I don't know, if I'm representing a buyer and I want to write an offer and I'm competing with 10 other offers, if I'm not skilled enough to still make the best offer just because I didn't get the uh, uh, updated approval from you on Sunday at 1 p.m. when you're on the boat or whatever you're doing, th- that's on me. I'm not skilled enough to win that. Mm. I'm gonna send you an email and I'm gonna, hey, this is the situation, here's the address. When you get to the office on Monday, please send me an updated offer. I'm gonna take my time, I'm gonna call the listing agent, I'm gonna say, yeah, I have, appro- have approval for 600, but they, they can g- approve much more, so I'm gonna send you this outdated approval with the offer and tell me what are other terms are important for you and the seller. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get those information from the listing agent and then I'm gonna expect you on Monday to get back to me and to say, hey, here's the updated approval, and I'm gonna send it to the listing agent. Again, I respect people time. And I don't, I, I, when people tell me like, oh, I can't do it now, when I ask them for something, I don't expect you to do it now. Whenever you have a chance, just let me know. And I don't expect like information on demand. And I also set expectations from client not to expect me. I'm not, what is it, uh, Netflix, Prime, whatever it is, I'm not on <laughs> demand. We all have lives, we all have families, and that's what we're talking about. So if I'm expecting other people to respect my family, just because I'm sending business to a lender or title, that doesn't mean nothing. 
family goes first. Mm -hmm. So when people uh, tell me that, uh, hey, I respect that and I love it. That tells me we have the same values. Mm -hmm. I think I, I, I can see it from both ways, right? Um, because I was that agent at, at times where, you know, you, you had to get the offer, in, especially like throughout the pandemic where it was like multiple offers all over the place and you had to get something in a certain amount of time where, you know, it was a little bit more urgency. But I also identify with what you were saying is, you know, um, there should be some level of work-life balance, right? Um, and a, also a little bit of respect of boundaries. Um, but I think like what Dania was saying is, you know, sometimes agents want to have that reassurance. Like, you know, no matter what time it is, I got your back. But like, you have to also be realistic in a sense. And I think like a lot of, well, not a lot of realtors, but some realtors may come from a bit of a scarcity um, point of view where they don't have a nice amount of business so this one specific deal is everything to them so they may magnify you know the situation times 10 and what it is because like Maite was saying like as long as the DU gets in in the morning I'm sure that that list agent is not going to present offers at 9 p.m. to their seller um, you know they're going to wait till the next day you know when they're able to meet with the seller to present those offers so it's really tough you know, because I get both sides of it, but it's like trying to find a balance with, you know, servicing the realtors and making sure that they feel that you got their back as well. So yeah. at the end of the day, like if you have an offer coming in, like, well, if you tell me you're as a your buyer's agent and mm -hmm. I'm the listing agent mm -hmm. and you say I have an offer coming in, but I'm waiting for the listing agent. It's Sunday, eight o'clock. Like, I'm going to know an offer's coming in. I might tell my seller, like, don't make a rash decision. Mm -hmm. Wait till tomorrow. Be patient, and you're right. Like people have lives. Like we have to also understand that. So they're gonna wait. From what this conversation is telling me is, I think you just have to set expectations, right? Mm -hmm. He told his family, "Hey, listen, I'm off limits during this time, and if you set the expectation that I'm available all the time, they're gonna do it." But I think either way, if they're reasonable people, they're going to respect one way or another. You just have to set what what Terrell said. You have to set the boundaries, right? And Okay, if they don't respect the boundaries, then okay, maybe you have a decision to make. But mm -hmm. ultimately, at the end of the day, as long as you communicate it, I think probably 95% of the time, they're going to respect whatever the boundaries yeah. are. Mm -hmm. That lead generates so you don't have to tolerate. I want to work with <laughs> nice people. Hey, cool. I want to work with people yeah. that respect me, my boundaries. So that's why I'm going to talk with, if I have to talk with 100 people every single week to accomplish that, I'll do it. Mm. Not a problem. Mm. That's, that's fair. fair. That's fair. I feel like it's a the biggest thing is like it's all about team building and not every realtor and lender should be a mesh. So mm -hmm. I had a lender before that I had to just like tell like I this isn't it. Like we cannot continue because he would amplify it was I don't want to speak too much on him but it was just it was just it wasn't right, you know? Yeah. He would amplify everything. He would call me at literally 1:40 a.m. with <laughs> I have this buyer. I just got it to the look. She just got peer proof for 125, but we can do, you know, so I'm like, all right, something's not right with you. I don't, <laughs> let's, let's just cut this here. Let's just cut this here because there's no reason. Would you this pick is, up at 1.40 a.m.? I never know what's going on. Yeah. I don't, like, what's wrong? What happened? I will. Listen, 1.40, I, I draw oh, the line. Hello. I mean, let's I pick up, right. on, I pick up in the ocean and all that, but no, yeah, no 1.40 a.m. I never know. 1.40 a.m.? You better will, tell me you have bottles and club is here and I'm coming. The only reason you're gonna call me I at will dive 40. and grab it because I need to know what's wrong, what's yeah. going on. I'm just so used to putting We're out fires. Like yeah. I've solved more problems yeah. than I've closed deals. Like it is crazy. Yeah. Like yeah. you know, so, so there's some careers like that. So mm. I like if you got a problem, I'll solve it. Mm. I know what to do. But that's that's what happened. But um, on the contrary, I don't remember my point. But on the contrary. <laughs> You're talking about relationships that they yeah I had find the, the oh yeah meshes. I had the one lender but then I have this one lender that it's when a deal is super serious to me it's automatically super serious to her mm -hmm. she's like okay i can understand it's really important to you i'm out of town but look here's what i can do mm -hmm. i'll send you a written email saying look they're qualified just you can send it to the listing agent mm -hmm. and then i'll do it like it's all about that compromise so mm -hmm. you kind of want to like be that mesh and match the agents you're working with that's yeah. that's really what we're looking for the, the lender that's going to be the best with our business model how we operate it's all the way we convey that information too right mm -hmm. like if we're, we're confident we say listen that du is coming tomorrow i yeah. got you yeah so yeah. so this is off topic but Brian it's a perfect it's a perfect segue um, you know how how do you best adapt with different business models because that's actually a really interesting yeah. point do you do you 
did you encounter that? I guess I should ask first. And if so, like, what questions do you ask? Or what, what questions should uh, other lenders or other realtors be asking and vice versa? Yeah, I, I think when you start out, uh, a lot of the relationships that you build are built by prospecting, right? You're going to a bunch of different places. You're meeting a bunch of different people. You're talking to them. And then you start building those relationships little by little. And I think the ones that stay are the ones that you fit with each other, right? You were just sharing about relationships. And I think that, you know, that's built over time. And you see that you come to a place where you both respect each other. And if I know, like, you're my people and you told me I'm sending this offer, I'll be like, okay, I'm here right now, but give me the listing agent's number. I'm going to call him right now. Hey, how are you? I'm Brian Acosta. It's a pleasure. I just want to introduce myself in case you had any questions about the offer. I'm going to be sending you that DU tomorrow. Well, you know, whatever the case is so that we can resolve the situation. But there's that connection there. And sometimes, obviously, at the beginning, you're trying to get everything you can. But eventually, you get to a place where you value your time and you value, you know, your peace to where you just know that things are not going to be a right fit, right? You might meet somebody through somebody else. Maybe a client already is working with an agent and you understand, like, man, this is not this is not going to work, you know, by the way that you guys connect with each other. And so I think it's about being honest. But if I'm having an open conversation with, let's say I go to lunch with a new agent and we're having a conversation, I ask a lot about how they do business, what they like, what they don't like, what are they looking for to see if it makes sense. I'm not just going to just say, I'm the best guy. You need to work with me. I'm the, I'm the man, you know, because at the end, that's not going to be good for them or for myself. You know, it's about building something that is good for both sides and that it, it makes sense. It's going to work. So, so I think that that's how you find, you know, the business models that, that work with, you know, are going to work best with yourself. Very cool. Thank you so much for that. Um, so let's, let's change gears now. Um, so when you do feel guilty about working as much as you do, um, first of all, do you feel guilty about it? And then uh, is there signs that make you feel guilt? And then maybe the most important thing for all our viewers out there is how do you, how do you make up for that? What are, what are some of the things that you do? Uh, to not necessarily smooth things over, but to to you know create some sort of understanding. I'm gonna work this hard, but I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe do this for you too. I, maybe I'm not questioning the same way, but hopefully you get what I'm asking. Well, my wife makes me feel guilty. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I think if you if you love your family and you want to be with them, you're always gonna have that that tugging feeling, right? When you're working, you're grinding, and you're there, and you're like okay, just one more email, just one more thing that I can knock off my list. Mm -hmm. And you're still going to feel that, um, you know, that pull. Um, but as far as being guilty, I feel that if you set up a standard that you're saying, hey, look, I, like I was sharing about having dinner with your family. If you're saying, hey, look, Saturday we said we're going to spend a family day. And no matter what happens, that family day is happening. Hey, so, you know, every Sunday we go to church as a family. So that's something, it doesn't matter what happens. You can invite me to whatever you want. I'm not showing up there because that is something that always has to happen. So there are certain things that you set up and you say, hey, you know, this is this is a, something that's important to us as a family. And and I think that, that that's key, you know, to, to, to have that in place. I, I think it's tough, man, um, you know, because I battle with that, like the guilt of, you know, not giving enough time to your, your spouse or your kid. Um, but also identifying that, you know, if you're a provider for your family, you know, kind of in a eat what you kill business in a mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of tough, you know, so it's trying, it's, it's really just really always like a, uh, a bit of a, you know, a trying process in a sense. So it, it, it's, it's always something that's always weighs heavy on my heart is, you know, I'm, am I spending enough time with my spouse? And you sometimes can feel it. You know, they won't even say it sometimes. You know, like uh, your significant other, you know, they put up with a lot. If, you, if you're if you with a real estate professional, you put up with a lot because you see us <laughs> deal with a lot of emotions. You see us deal with a lot of personalities and a lot of conversations each day. And, you know, sometimes it could be draining to them just to even see and feel that energy that's being poured onto you. So mm, um, it's tough. It's tough. Sure. Yeah. Um, for me, it's really like unconventional because my wife always wanted to like go to school for something and get a degree and she finally became an RN mm -hmm. and she loves it, you know, but you know, when you first become an RN, you have to work those overnight shifts. Mm -hmm. So I, who am I to say no, you know, so, but as a result, I'm the primary caretaker of my daughter. So I'm the one, you know, up all night and 
there during the day. Granted, she does do a lot, but yeah. it takes a toll because it's like, it's not like I can say, hey, can you watch my baby? You know, like, so she really is there on every single phone call, every single Zoom call, and it's like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if she's aware of what's going on, but she knows, like, let me be quiet real quick, you know, like, I just, I, I don't get it, but I just, I just figure it out every single day. But as a result, it still leaves me with that, okay, then I'm not going hard enough in real estate. And then when I go hard in real estate, I'm not going hard enough at home because I, what, I'm going to just leave her in the room watching Miss Rachel. You know, I can't. <laughs> so, so she absolutely loves Miss Rachel. And when I, whenever Miss Rachel's on, she would just, she's dialed in. But it's like, you, you don't want to overdo that. Yeah. So honestly, I just, I just try to go ham on my team. That's really where I try to spend most of my time, dealing with the team and helping them build their careers. Yeah. Because when I have a client, they're the first ones I can say, hey, can you show this? Can you do this? Can you help them sell this listing? Can you do this? And just knowing that I poured myself all into them, and whenever I give them something, I know they can give the client the same kind of love that I would give them. Because, you know, it is everything I gave them. I guess that's how I am able to kind of get by as far as balancing both. But you still never feel like it's enough. Right. But it's that's a gift, enough. man. That's a gift, that time that you're getting to spend with your daughter. Yeah. And the truth is that none of us here are going to be sitting on our deathbed and saying, like, man, I wish I would have sold another deal. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> just, one, just one more. Yeah. Just one more deal. We're going to think about, you Should know. Should have been to one more soccer game. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. My, my, story, one more, one more my story vacation. turns up because my daughter's 10 months, and I have another baby due. In, well. um, Congrats. in August. Congrats. So I'm gonna have to balance two babies and two businesses because this is I have this the studio visit and then the, the investment property grew. So all I could do is just take it one step at a time and build a bigger team to make it work and just hope that I'm able to you know keep it going. Yeah. Danya gave me some good advice. Cool. Danya yes. gives good advice. You know what's interesting before we go to their I answers. I think these talks are very powerful. Yeah, That's what I was about these. to say. Yeah. I mean, it's not just for the listeners, but it's Correct. for us, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening. A lot. Like, yeah. I, 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 I'm taking yeah. mental notes over yeah. here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Danya. Do I, am I guilty? Yes, guilty is charged. <laughs> 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 Listen, I love my son, right? And yeah. sometimes when I'm away, I'm like, damn, you yeah. know? I feel it, but I also know that I'm providing a life for him that I never had, and I'm gonna give to him what I could never have received. And so that for me is a driving force, and he knows, and he loves me, and he's so loved. So our relationship is great because I take those times, like reading books at night and going to his soccer games and taking him on vacations and always making sure that we have that like physical, like, I love you, I'm proud of you, how's school, let's read, what do you have going on? You take those moments, you know? Mm -hmm. But I work my ass off and the kid knows it. (laughs) Am I guilty? Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. I feel that. I was guilty. (laughs) My guy, I don't feel feel guilty anymore. Honestly, I, I, I choose to leverage a lot uh i sometimes i have people come clean my place because i want to i don't want to spend my uh, my saturday or sunday cleaning i'd rather pay someone x amount of dollars so i i can take my son to park mm-hmm. so I, I i really choose to leverage a lot of things in my life at this point before it was you know shut up and work yeah. basically grind 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 now i really whatever i can if it makes sense for me to do it, I'll do it in a heartbeat. And also make a lot of investments so you have you have mm-hmm. passive income and you have money working for you. I think outsourcing is key. I have a cleaning lady, I have a yard guy, I have a car cleaning person, yeah. I have an assistant, I have a whole team. Leverage, 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 team, leverage. Team but building. you still gotta work your ass off because yeah. I'm a hustler, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah but, but we focus we focus on the pro- on the activity that are giving us best return. I don't see activity of me putting the sign or a logbox mm-hmm. as my best user. I, I can jump on the phone and talk in hour between eight and 12 people, generate three, four leads and set one listing appointment. That's much higher return on my investment 
versus me driving to put a log box or me driving to do this. Amen. I had so I'd rather that. pay someone fifty dollars to go ahead and do that. Yeah. yeah. Than me actually getting in the car and doing it. <coughs> Amen. That's the biggest lesson I learned. Like not every single task is worth your time. Because I would tell myself if I don't do it myself, it's not gonna get done right. But it's like, mm-hmm. is it no. really that hard? Is no. all of these you know, I have to really trust other people. So big lesson to learn. So good yeah. point. Yeah, grind with the end goal in mind, and then eventually when you have that money, you can leverage. That's that's very powerful, guys. Um, before we get to our last question, I, I think it's interesting to talk about this. Do you hope your kids get in this industry and do what you do? Yes. Why? You know why? Because I have built my own legacy, and I feel like my son watches it on a daily basis, and I know for sure at one point he's going to say, I want to get in on that, yeah. you know? Like, for example, you were saying earlier how – um, a lot of our uh, leaders across the nation have started their way. Like they've been, you know, their path has been paved by their parents. Like, for example, Christina Papas. I, listen, she is three months younger than me. OK, but to me, I look up to her. <laughs> I'm like, you are what I aspire to be. Right. Because she is the CEO of the Kai's company, which is one of the best companies in South Florida. Her father, Mike Papas, was like paramount in the leadership, you know, across the nation. And I say to myself, like, imagine, like, if I'm doing this now, imagine what my son can do under my wing. I see a lot of, um, you know, multi-generational real estate families, and I see, like, the younger generation doing so well, and I want that for my son. And so I have this, like, discussion with my fiance. He's like, you know, let me tell you something. Like, why should he just go straight into real estate? I'm like, because real estate is un- unlimited, right? Yeah. But, like, granted, like, do I want him to get higher education? Of course. You always want the best for your children. But I feel like this is a career where he can take it to the next level, like like I have and, like, we all aspire to do. And there's no limit. So, yeah. yes, absolutely, I want my son to go. I read once that real estate is the purest form of entrepreneurship. I agree. Yeah, agree. I can see that. I 1000% would love my son to be in real estate and, you know, for multiple reasons, um, real estate has changed completely the trajectory of my life. Um, and, you know, it has given me an opportunity to one, not provide for myself, but all the people around me, my family, my friends and things of that nature and give opportunities. And, you know, I just want to be able to pass that down. Now, if he wants to do something else, of course, you know, Go, go ahead, but, you know, like, uh, my vision would be, you know, my wife's an attorney, and, um, you know, I do the real estate thing. I want to be a real estate attorney and do the real estate investing stuff. So, but, you know, if he doesn't want to do that stuff, it's fine because, like, the things and the, the foundation that I've laid, it allows him to do whatever he wants to do. So, yeah, so for me, I feel like my kids are going to be so close and back-to-back because mm-hmm. they're, what, like, Five, a few months apart. Yeah. So at least nine. Yeah. Siamese <laughs> twins. <laughs> Wait, no, Irish twins. What are they, what are, what are they Irish, called those? I think it's Irish, Irish twins. twins. Yeah, Irish yeah. twins. <laughs> so <laughs> edit, edit. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. I'm so, keeping it. All right, cool. keep it. So <laughs> I felt like I have two very different companies. The AV Club is more my creative side. Mm-hmm. You know, the investor property gurus is more my like, oh, I could get nifty with it too mm-hmm. side. So I feel like my kids are going to be very different. One's going to be a creative junkie and one's going to be, well, not a creative. I don't like that. One's gonna it's be, good. It's good. We're good. Okay. One's going to be <laughs> creative. Use that one. One's going to be creative and one is going to be, you know, techie, bookie, because I'm both things. Like I will read a bunch of books. I will go through Audible and just go ham and I will also, you know, let's go to this beach party. So... I feel like my kids are going to pick. I'm, I'm going to feel them out and be like, okay, this one's for you. And then this one's for you. So that's that's my strategy there. Well, ultimately, you should let them decide, right? No. I'm going to nah, be like, I, I, I know what you I know a perfect thing for you. I don't know. I mean, at any time my parents told me you're going to do this, I said, watch me do something else. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Bring it. That's a bad Watch point. me. Yeah, yeah okay. no. I mean, my dad. Okay, so like we before learned, this, I was, a, I was a meteorologist. My dad's like, you know, you just don't got what it takes to be a meteorologist. What? You what can't do the time? math classes. I've been through Listen, these. this guy is the best presenter, the best on I camera. I mean, I listen. Let me tell oh, you, he this. is a performer. And, and yeah. you know what? I straight up told him, I go, I'm going to do it. And yeah. and you know what? Hey, listen, he wasn't 100% wrong. Like, I failed uh, calculus three, three times. I failed differential equations twice. 
So um, he wasn't wrong, but I think ultimately if you put your mind to something and you say you're going to do it, you'll eventually figure it out, right? So uh, you know, do, you're, you're your own dad. You're your own dad. You know, obviously right. you can tell your kid what to do, but they might have other news for you, man. Yeah, I hate I, to tell you. I ain't making a no-calculus <laughs> class. Nobody I'll tell you that, else Kevin. made it a calculus. Dude. I ain't making a no-calculus. Yeah, right. So don't feel too bad. I ain't right. seen no-calculus <laughs> in my life. Right. So – be proud of that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no. Um, I feel as though I'm a sea witch child. Because I'm, like, I grew up on, like, arts and crafts. Like, that was my grandparents' biggest thing. Because when my da- dad passed, I'll spend my time with my grandparents. And it was like, okay, let's let's make business cards. What's your little business? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to sweep the driveway. That's my business. You know, so, like, we just grew up on that. So I'm going to do that with my kids. Like, all right, so what's your business? And sweep we'll the driveway is such a Florida thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> we used to shovel snow back in St. Louis. Oh, no. What? Yeah, what yeah. No, when no, it no, snowed, I got excited. Excited because I knew I was making some money. No, we wash cars. Yeah. That's cool too. Yeah, That's cool I would too. Do all the like hot stuff. If it's car hot, I'm doing it. Yeah, no, he. No, it's true. He actually like, has a bunch of great. Like trying to do like yeah. Baywatch car wash. No, it didn't work. Yeah, I did it all. <laughs> all right, so let's wrap this all together, guys. Um, this has actually been a really cool. I'm not even a dad, and like this has been a really cool this podcast for me. This yeah, yeah, for time. sure. Um, so, and we've touched upon it a little bit. So let's make this kind of a closing thoughts around this question. Is um, what can you do to improve your work-life balance? Um, or what have you done? What do you want to tell the world how to improve your work-life balance if, if you want to share anything? Be easier on yourself. Mm. Be present. Be present. That's good. Be invest in yourself and go to conferences, hire a coach. I have, like, physical coach. I have a real estate coach, Tony Robbins, psychotherapy. That. So that's the freezer thing? Excuse me? That's, that's cryo. That's cryo. <laughs> He's talking psycho. No, it's not freezer. <laughs> no, psycho, psychotherapy. Oh, yeah, yeah, psychotherapy. Okay, okay. So uh, I, I understanding I am imperfect in so many different areas and I need guidance, yet investing in yourself is the highest return that you can make more than investing in anything else. Yeah. yeah. You take things very seriously, and that's great. So take things seriously. Whichever camera's mine, take things seriously. That's good. Uh, That's the good take, point. Take things seriously. Don't take yourself too seriously. Life has to be fun, and yeah. we have to treat each other with respect. doesn't matter what we do, how much we earn. I had the opportunity to go and interact with some highly successful people, that, and I'm talking hundreds of millions worth, mm-hmm. that are so humble, their values are so grounded, that I'm in awe. And I'm like, I aspire to become a person like this. Mm. And before I was making mistakes, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm helping X amount of families. I think I'm the, you know, big man. No, doesn't, doesn't. At the end of the day, we're st- still going to go to the same place, six feet under. We still breathe the same air, drink the same water, treat everybody with respect. So to improve your life, I would say invest in yourself That's and good. your business. I like that. I like that. I would say let go and understand that everything is going to still fall into place. Um, you know, kind of same sentiments as you. Like, I think I suffer from a little bit of, like, anxiety. Like, yeah. you know, and kind of magnifying certain things more than what it needs to be. Um, and then also, like, honing in and just spending too much time on my new task. So really yeah. letting, letting go of certain things and delegating it down. Um, I think it will help tremendously in, you know, allowing you to have a better work-life balance. Yeah, you could get PTSD in real estate. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's seriously. a thing. You will get PTSD in real estate. Seriously. It's a thing. I'm, I'm stressed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. H- how about you, Brian? Um, so, you know, I was thinking, um, you know, I used to work for a financial advice company. And we used to do an exercise with our clients where we would ask them to list the things that are most important in their life. And then we would ask them to write next to those things that were most important to them to put the amount of hours per day that they spend in with those things. And it was interesting to find that the things that mattered most to people are the things that they spend the least time doing. It was like most of the time was spent working, driving to work. Cause some people have to drive an hour or an hour to work. So they'd say two hours driving, you know, I'm maybe nine hours at work, you know, I'm trying to sleep. They, they'd organize these things, but then they would say like, family is important to me, my health, but I don't have time to go to the gym. I don't eat right, you know? And so you would see this, this situation that people were going through where it didn't add up what they were saying. 
And I think that the key is to constantly be reminding ourselves, like, what really matters. You know, at the end of the day, when we come to work-life balance, you know, I've heard people say, um, you know, work-life balance is each of the individual. You know, if you want to work a bunch of hours per day, that's fine. You know, if if the, if if that, uh, you know, family isn't important to you or those things are important to you, then that's okay. But if not, if you do care about legacy and investing into the future and investing into your family and doing that, then, then that has to be it. And as far as, like, uh, something we can do, I think you guys segued into it, which was just leverage. And not only leverage as far as being able to buy back our time, but I think um, the time that we are using, using it wisely, right? I think a lot of times, especially in this industry, a lot of time can be wasted, you know, doing a lot of things that don't matter or things that are not, you're not investing in the right place. And so I think the key for a lot of people that may be listening are like, even if that the five minutes every every hour that you scroll on social media or whatever, you add it up, you know, it starts to add up. So when you, you take an inventory of what you're doing, I think we can look and say, hey, let me make sure that with the hours that I am investing, I'm going to give that the fullest. And then the, the time that I'm giving to my family, I'm going to give that the fullest. Thank you so much for mentioning that the best developers are programming a bunch of things that are going to take time from us, all mm -hmm. the social media, everything. They're, f they're literally sucking our time, and it's on us to learn how to protect it and not waste time. Like you said, five minutes scrolling, well, five times times, so let's say 12, that's one hour. Mm -hmm. One hour every single day, that's seven hours a week, 28 hours a month, 30 hours a month. That's three full business days that you can be productive or you can watch your son play soccer you can take him to the training you can pick a custom-made jersey for him from his favorite European from barcelona club. european <laughs> club <laughs> I did that. There, it there it is we think the same so it's really fight for the time he's good <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> full of wisdom full yeah, of wisdom for sure right. mate yeah. um all right well hey any any closing thoughts guys i mean this is this is good so if you got family first thoughts, Closing thoughts. Yeah, I like, yeah. See, I like saying something positive at the end of the episode. Well, this has been pretty so positive right, the whole yeah. way. I mean, I guess we've been talking about some struggles, but... Yeah, but, you know, like, be kind to your pets. You know, like, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> family first. A get family can be a pet. Get your neutered. Don't kick yeah, your dog. Yeah, Don't kick your dog. <laughs> oh I like that. Okay, family first. Close family first. Family first. Close so, like so... It. To all the mamas, to all the grandmas, to all the wives, to all the husbands, to all the, to all the dog others, owners, to all the dog and owners, the cat owners. Thank you for your Family understanding. Friends. Thank you. Okay. Thank patient. you for your support. Thank you for your patience. If it wasn't for you, we couldn't do what we do. So Thank I know you. sometimes we are uh, very involved in everything else, but um, if it wasn't we for your support, love you. you yeah, right. We love you. Uh, we'll we'll end it there. Thing? Are we doing this? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's end with some hearts, guys. We love you. To, to, love to you. everybody <laughs> out there, to all our support, thank you. There we and go. we'll see you in the next podcast. Take care. Boom.